Do you know about Google's asynchronous AI coding agent called as Jewels? Well, today in this video, I'm going to use Google's Jewels and let's see how good it is and what it is capable of doing. And if you do want to use Google Jewels, all you gotta do is to click the first link in the description below and head over to their website that is jewels.google. And Google Jewels was actually in beta for some time now, but it is now live and anyone can access it. And now what exactly is Google Jewels, you ask? Well, Jewels is an asynchronous AI coding agent from the house of Google. So basically how it works is that you add a GitHub repo to Jewels and after you connect the same, you can now go ahead and ask Jewels to make any changes, add new features, do some bug fixes, anything as such and hit enter and now Jules will do whatever stuff that you asked to in the background asynchronously. That means you don't have to actively watch what Jules is doing. You can give a prompt and hit enter and Jules will do the rest. And now again, if you want to use the same, just head over to Jules.google and you can access the same. And again, they also have a generous free plan. So if I click on this plans option right here, so these are the three plans that they have for now. One is Jules, next is Pro and Ultra. So as you can see, Joel's free is like 15 tasks per day, three concurrent tasks, and it is powered by Gemini 2.5 Pro. But if you want even more limits, then obviously you will have to go with the Pro or Ultra versions, which gives you access to like 100 tasks per day, 15 concurrent tasks. And now, as I mentioned earlier, Google Jewels is a asynchronous AI coding agent. That means it can parallelly run multiple different tasks. For example, let's say you have a project and you have three different bugs, or let's say you have two bugs and one new feature that you want to implement. Well, you can open three instances of Jewels and then give prompt, like two prompts to fix the bugs and one prompt to add a new feature and the AI will do it. And after doing everything, you can review the code and you can open a pull request or a branch in your GitHub repo. And after if and if everything looks good, you can merge it and get going from there. And again, the cool thing about using Jules is that after you give a prompt, Jules will spin up a new virtual machine and clone your project and then make the changes, test it out. And only after that will it push or let's say create a new branch in GitHub. So first thing first, head over to Jules.google and click on this try Jules button right here. So in this case, I'm already logged in. And now if this is your first time, when you open Jules, this is going to be the kind of screen that you will see. And it says meet Jules. An async development agent, Jewel tackles bugs, small feature requests, and other software engineering tasks with direct export to GitHub. And now Jules is not a full-fledged AI coding, let's say, agent like Laubel, Bolt, or you know, V0. It is a little different actually. So you can use Jules to let's say add new features or fix existing bugs, you know, minor tweaks and changes here and there. So if you want to use Jules on your existing project, obviously you will have to connect your GitHub account. And as you can see, here we have a button that says connect to GitHub. So I'll click on the same and now it opens up a pop-up and now all you got to do is to click on this button that says authorize Google Labs Jewels. And again, if you want to use Google Jewels, you should already have a GitHub account and you should also have a repository in which you want Jewels to make changes to. So I'll click on this button right here. Okay. So it says you're being redirected to the authorization page. And now you have the option to select the repositories. If you want Jules to have access to all the repositories within your GitHub account, you can select this first option right here. Or if you only want to give access to certain repositories within your GitHub account, you can select the second option right here. And now in this case, I want to give access to this particular repo that says audio, which is like a sample project that I created a, a year back, I believe. And now I'll click on install and authorize. Okay. Let me quickly sign in. Confirm. All right, so it says successfully authenticated with GitHub. All right, so as you can see, our GitHub project is now added to Jules. And if you click on this drop down menu, you'll be able to add new repository. Or if you have granted access to entire repo within your project, you can find all of that in here and you can select the project that you want to make changes to. And again, you can also select the branch in by clicking this button right here. So in our case, we only have this main branch. And now using Jules is pretty simple and straightforward. So whatever changes or bug fixes or testing or whatever that you want to carry out using Jules, you just explain that in this input box right here. And optionally, you can also upload an image and then you click on this create plan option and the AI gets to work and you can review the plan, approve it and hit enter. And that's all that you got to do. And now I'll show you how to make some changes or let's say add new features or fix a bug using Jules. But before that, let me quickly take a second to talk about our sponsors for today's video by Trover. Imagine a dedicated memory layer, one that sits between you and your AI coding agent quietly remembering everything that matters the most. 
Well, this is where Byte Rover comes into play. Byte Rover automatically generates memories from your code base, capturing programming concept, bug fixes, and business logic. This functions as a second brain for your AI agent, ensuring your agent automatically retrieves the right context relevant information every time. Now, Byte Rover is a game changer if you work as a team. In fast moving organizations, lost knowledge means slower teams. Well, Byte Rover can help you create a shared memory layer so your agents and engineers reuse what's already been solved and not start over. To get started, you can simply head over to Byte Rover's official website and sign up for a new account and add the same to your AI code editor in just a single click. And it is available for almost all leading AI code editors, including Cloud Code, Gemini CLI, Cursor, Windsurf, you name it. After adding Byte Rover to your AI coding agent, when you use it, for example, let's say Cursor in my case, all my interaction, preferences, bug fixes, and pretty much everything will be stored in Byte Rover's memory. And every time I give a prompt to Cursor to do something, it will automatically look at my memory, pull the relevant information, and get going. And it will automatically store important information as well. Byte Rover can also be considered as a git for AI memories. So you have the option to add memories manually by uploading files and images or even text from their web interface. And you can even edit the same to add even more content so the Git-like interface allows you to see a complete version history as well. And now if you do want to try out Byte Rover, just click the first link in the description below and add the same to your AI coding agent today. And again, they also have a generous free plan as well. Now back to the video. And now just as to show you what project we are working in, here I have opened up the GitHub repo. So as I mentioned earlier, this right here is a GitHub repo that I created a year back as part of some tutorial. So basically it is a simple voice transcription or let's say audio transcription app. And I published or let's say deployed the same using Vercel. And this right here is the UI. So anyone can drag and drop a piece of you know music or let's say mp3 wav or m4a file and click on this transcribe button and our app will transcribe the content and show the text content and they can copy it. So that is basically the core functionality and this is the only page that we have within our project. And now what I'll do is I'll head back to Joel's and now first of all okay as I mentioned earlier it is an asynchronous agent and it can also run tasks parallelly or let's say concurrent task. So we can maybe let's say open two instances of the same. So this right here is instance number one and here we are loading the second one. So there you go. Here we have it. And in both of them, we have selected the same repo. And now in the first one, I'll ask the AI to create a readme file for our project. And in the second file or let's say the second instance, I'll ask the AI to let's say add a about page to our project. So what I'll do is I'll quickly go ahead and say, could you please analyze our entire code base and create a detailed readme file and add the same to the project? So this right here is a simple prompt just to show you how jewels work. And of course, if you want to, let's say, add an image for reference or for any other purpose, you can click on this button right here. And if you click on this three dots icon right here, you can start directly or create a plan. So in this case, I'll actually click on this option that says create plan. But you can also click on this option that says start interactive plan. Work with jewels to deeply understand goals before plan generation. So if you want jewels to directly create a plan, you can select the first option. Or if you want to give some inputs before jewels actually create the plan, well, you can select the second option. But in this case, I'll keep it as the first one and click on create plan. Okay, so there you go. It says, would you like to enable notifications and I'll let you know when a plan is ready or code is ready for review? Uh, maybe not. Next up, I'll open the second one and in here I'll say this right here is a voice transcription app where users can upload a audio file and upon clicking the transcribe button, our website will generate the transcript and people can copy the same. So could you please create a about page for our app describing what exactly our app do, what are the features while maintaining the same styling as our app have now. And this right here is a Next.js based project. So here I'm asking the AI to add a about page to our project. So this could be considered as a, let's say a feature addition. So basically we are asking the AI to add a about page. In your case, it could be a feature addition, a bug fix or test, whatever that you can just enter that in here. And now I'll click on this create plan option. And now what exactly happens behind the scenes you ask? Well, what happens is that Jules will spin up a new VM that is a virtual machine and clone the entire. So as you can see, cloning this particular project. So clone the entire GitHub repo into the VM that it has spun up. And after that, it will run the project and obviously run the project in its VM, analyze the code, and then go ahead and make the changes that we asked for. So that's exactly what Jules will do. And now in the first instance, as you can see here, it have created a plan. 
So we asked the Jules AI to create a readme file and add the same to the project. Now it says create a new readme.md file, replace the existing readme.md file with the new one and verify the new readme.md file. So these are the three plans that Jules has come up with. And if I open, okay. Okay, so this right here is the, you know, default readme.md file that is created when you create a Next.js based project. So this is the default one. So this is the one that we currently have. And now Jules is planning to create a new one and replace the existing one with the newest one. Okay, so I'll click on this option called as approve plan. And now Jules will get into work. It says plan approved. And it says, I'll write a detailed readme.md file that includes a project title and description, list of features, technologies used, instructions on how to set up and run project locally, including the need for Gemini API key, a description of the project structure, etc. And if I head back, okay. Okay, here it have come up with a new plan as well. So it says, create a new route for about page. I will create a new directory at slash about and a page.tsx file inside it. So that is the actual convention or let's say procedure for creating a new route in Next.js. So that's actually correct. Implement the content and styling for the about page and I will add content describing the application's features and apply the same styling as the main homepage to maintain a consistent look and feel. Add navigations link. I'll add a link to the homepage and navigate to the about page. Okay, that's good. And if you want to let's say make any changes or want to add something more, well, you can just go ahead and give follow prompt in here and then you can hit enter and then you can see the updated plan and get going from there. So in this case, I'll click on this approve plan option in here as well. And now, as I mentioned earlier, Jules is an asynchronous coding agent. And here we have two Jules instance running in parallel or concurrently. And it seems like the first one is already done. So towards the left side, you can find all the activities that the AI agent within Jules did. And towards the right side, you can find the code in diff mode. So this was our existing readme file, right? So readme.md file, the basic one that Next.js already have. And this right here is the detailed one. So as you can see, all these lines marked in red is the one that Jules has deleted. And all these lines marked in green is the content that Jules have added. And as you can see, it says this is a web application that transcribes audio files using Google's Gemini 1.5 Pro model. It's a pretty old one, by the way. So audio file upload, drag and drop features, transcription, responsive design, framework, language, styling, AI model, icons. Okay, so it has actually done a pretty good job. And now as you can see, we asked Jules to do a particular task and it has done the same. And if I scroll down, as you can see, it says ready for review, feature slash add detailed with me. And it is now asking us whether we want to publish the branch. Well, you have a couple of options in here. You can publish the branch and generate a PR or publish a branch with your changes. So you can review the code. And if you feel like it's okay, you can publish the branch or let's say create a PR. So in this case, I'll click on this publish branch option right here. And if I head back, we only have one branch right now. That is the main branch. So let's wait for it. So it says publishing and it will take a couple of moments. Okay, it's already done. And now if I head back and if I refresh, as you can see here, we can find the newly created branch. And if I click on the same, there you go. Here we have the updated readme.md file with all the content. And as you can see, Google Labs Jules board is the one who added it. And there you go. Here we have it already live. So in a similar fashion, you could ask the AI agent within Jules to make any changes to your code just by giving simple prompts. And again, here, let's say AI agent missed something and you want the AI agent to add the same. Well, you can give follow up prompts and ask the AI agents to make changes. And then you can again push changes to the branch or create a PR as well. So that part is done. And now here in the second one, okay, that part is also done. So it says I've created a new route for about page by creating the about slash okay page file all right again it says this commit introduces an about page to the application all right so it is located in the slash about route and provides a description of the application's features and towards the right side i can find the content of the about page as well and again i can let's say publish branch and click on generate pr and i'll click on publish pr this time so it says successfully created pull request and if i head back to my project and if i refresh as you can see here, we already have a pull request and there you go. It says feed added about page. Okay. And now here you can find complete list of everything that the AI agent did. So pretty much everything looks good. And now I'll click on this option that says uh, merge and I'll click on confirm merge. Let's wait. All right. So it says 
pull request successfully merged and closed okay so and now i'll come back and click on this compare and pull request click on create pull request okay let's see i'll click on merge all right so now all the changes that we made is live in our main branch so as you can see it is one minute ago and if i open the app as you can see here we have the about page that is the about route and if i head back here we also have the updated readme.md file as well and it seems like okay versal is still uh deploying the app so if i actually go to the slash about root now it will fail of course it will show okay the deployment is successful is what i believe let's see okay so the deployment is already successful but as you can see here we have a about us page listing what the application can do and all the features and we asked the ai to maintain the exact same styling as our home page and as you can see nothing have changed so the same container here we have the about us page and everything is in place okay so that's pretty much how you use jewels and if you want to let's say add new features fix some bugs within your app do some testing activities or anything as such well you can use jewels for that so the flow is that you add your github repo and connect the same to jewels and once you have it you can just go ahead and let's say select the same select the same repo in here select the branch and after that you can give a prompt and click on this create plan option review the plan hit enter and now jules will make the changes and you can review the code and if you want to let's say make any, any more changes you can suggest jules the fixes or let's say changes and after that it will rerun and create an updated uh, you know changes and after that you can create a new branch or a pr and once you're happy with that you can merge into the main branch and get going from there so that is the overall flow of using google jules and again as mentioned earlier they give you around 15 task limit per day so the current free plan limit is like 15 tasks and again three concurrent you know parallel uh jules instances that can be run so yeah that's pretty much all i wanted to show you in this video so if you want to let's say make some minor changes add simple features and all that you can actually use jules so that's pretty much all i wanted to show you in this video and if you want to try jules all you gotta do is to head over to jules.google.com or jules.google and hit the link in the description below and you can sign up for a new account connect to github account and start using it right away so i hope you guys found this video useful if yes make sure to subscribe and i'll see you in the next one